My name is Dobias van Inge. In this session we will discuss tech and technology of HP 2920 switch series. Before we dive into this tech and technology, let's have a closer look at the switch first. There are multiple 2920 switch types. In front of us we have HP 2920 24G PoE Plus switch. On the front we have a power and fault LED indicators. There is also a locator LED and you can find two console ports. One of the console ports is a micro USB port. There is also an out of band management interface and an auxiliary USB port. This auxiliary USB ports can be used for processing, command file or downloading switch firmware images. On the top multiple LED indicators can be found. This switch type provides 20, 10, 100, 1000 PoE, PoE Plus ports and also four dual personality interfaces. All the RJ45 ports support Auto NDIX by default. This means it doesn't matter if you plug in a straight or a crossover cable. By default the four RJ45 dual personalities in the grey area are enabled. These ports also supply PoE or PoE Plus. When an SFP is installed the associated RG45 port will be disabled. Besides multiple 1 gigabit transceivers, this switch also provides support for 100BX and 100FX. On the back of the switch we can find a grounding lock, mounting hole, two 10 gigabit expansion module slots. These modules provide additional high speed network connectivity. There are two module types, one with two port 10 gigabit SFP plus interfaces and a two port 10 gigabit base T version. The smaller slot provides space for a switch stacking module. This module provides two stacking connectors and stacking cables up to 3 meter can be used. You can also find the power supply and the AC connector. Depending on the 2920 switch type a power supply will be selected. A 165 watt for non-PUE PUE plus switches and a 575 watt for PoE PoE plus switches. The XPS connector is for future use. Let's insert the stacking module. As you can see all the switches have now a 10 gigabit module installed for the uplinks to the network and a stacking module installed. When HP2920 switch is powered on for the first time without a stacking module installed, stacking will be disabled and saved in the switch running config. Subsequently, after a stacking module has been installed, stacking must be enabled through a CLI command. Before we discuss supported topologies, it is important to note that any combinations of up to four 2920 switches can be stacked together via a high speed backplane to form a virtual switch. The supported topologies are chain or ring. Chain is a topology where you connect single cable between switches and end up with an open ended chain. Because a single failure within the switch, stacking module or cable will cause switch to switch communication failure and if these are not switches at the very end of the stack, two stack fragmented are formed as results. In order to obey network topology and protocol rules, one fragment becomes inactive. For these reasons, chain is not recommended for topology. So let's make sure how a chain topology will look like. We install a stacking cable until you hear a click. And we also installed it in the outer port. This is a chain topology. And if you have more switches up here, you will end up with an open ended chain. With a ring topology, you can also connect up to four switches. Main advantage is that switches form a closed ring that will provide protection against single failures. Now let's see how a ring topology will look like. And this is a ring topology with two switches. Now all the cables are connected. Let's have a look 
at how to create a stack. You should power off all the switches, install the modules and the cables and power on the switches. The first switch will become the commander, the second switch will become the standby switch. All the other switches will become members of the stack. The member ID will be determined by the sequence of booting. It is also possible to use plug and go method by connecting all the switches and let the stacking decide which members will become the commander and the standby. In this video we want to determine switch stacking roles and use the deter deterministic model. Let's have a look on how to configure this. We just booted up the top switch and connected the console port to our laptop. The first step we're going to take is let's take a look at which modules are installed in the switch. You can do this with the show module command. As you can see in slot A we have a 2 port 10 gigabit SFP plus module installed. In the stacking slot we have a 2 port stacking module installed. Let's take a look at the status of the stacking. You can do this with the show stacking command. As you can see stacking is disabled. This can mean two things. Either this switch has been booted once without a stacking module installed and then stacking is automatically disabled or it means that somebody manually disabled stacking in the configuration. In this case this switch has been booted once without a stacking module installed. Normally when you receive a 2920 switch from the HP factory and you install the stacking module before you booted it the first time stacking will be automatically enabled to make sure that everybody can install a stack very easy. In this demonstration we want to go through the commands and through the deterministic mode in creating a stack so that everybody understands how the stack is created and which commands are used. So let's go into the configuration mode. And let's enable stacking. Normally if you have the stacking command and stacking is enabled you have a lot of options. In this case you only have the option to enable stacking. If I press enter it will ask me to save the configuration and after I say yes the switch will go into immediate reboot. You see, before I press yes here, I want to make sure that everybody understands that this video is a showing the real boot time. So if you want to go to the next step, you need to forward the video. Let's reboot the switch. As you can see the switch is now booted, let's go into the console mode again. Let's type show stacking to see what happened. 
Oh, as you can see, stacking is now enabled. There's still no stacking ID, but we will look at that configuration very soon. There is a MAC address and there is one member ID and that's himself. And this is also the commander and it has the default priority 128. So let's go into configuration mode and now let's take a look at the stacking command. Stacking. As you can see, we have much more options now. Since we didn't have a stacking ID, and this stacking ID will be used throughout the whole stack, we're going to set the stacking ID. Now take a look at the stacking command. As you can see, stacking ID is set, stacking status is active, and stack topology is chain, but we still only have one member. This switch is now status is the commander, and we want to configure the switch as always be the commander. So let's take a look how we do that in the configuration command. We go back into the stacking command again, and we say member, we say 1, this is the member ID, and we're going to set the priority. Already set, the default priority is 128. You can configure the priority for 1 to 255. The higher the number, the higher the priority. So we're going to set this one as 255. Let's take a look at some other options we have in the stacking. We also, if you want to have real control on the stack, we also can pre-provision or pre-configure the members. So let's provision the members and let's take a look what options we have. Okay, I want to have member 2, going to add to the stack. And as you can see, I can set the priority, I can remove it, I can shut down it, but I also can configure the type. And the type is going to make sure these are all the product numbers of the different 2920 options. In this, in this case, we're using a 9727A. So let's configure this one. And you can even, if you want to have more control, configure the MAC address. This is what we're not going to do, and we leave it as is. Save the configuration. Yes. And as you can see, the stacking configuration is now configured. The member, is member type 1 is configured, the type and the MAC address. The priority is configured, and we even pre-provisioned the member type 2. Let's take a look at the stacking status. Okay, now we're going to boot up the bottom switch and connect to the console cable. The bottom switch is booted, and let's take a look first at which modules are installed in the switch. As you can see, in slot A, there is not a 10 gigabit SFP plot module installed, but there is now a 10 gigabit copper module installed. And in the stacking module, there is a two port stacking module installed. So let's take a look at the stacking status. Our stacking is disabled also on, on this switch. So what are we going to do on this switch is just enable stacking when we go into configuration mode and we only connect one stacking cable, not the second one yet. So only one stacking cable. So let's go into the configuration mode. Stacking, and if everything is correct, we only have the option to enable it. So we're going to enable and then we're also going to reboot the switch. Again, we're going to show you the full reboot. So if you want to go to the next step, just forward the video.
As you can see, the booting took a little bit longer, but it had to initialize the stack, set up the stack, and as you can see, now press any key to connect to the commander. So if I press, let's take a look at what the current stacking status is. As you can see, we have a chain topology. Why? Because we only connected one cable. But as you can see, the stack status is active. I have one member, that's my commander with a high priority, and a second member got the default standby. If we do a show run, as you can see, there is only one configuration. And I'm connected still to the bottom switch. And you can also see uh, the port numbers, how you can reach the port. Stack number one, port one, or stack number two, port two. So let's take a look if we create a ring configuration. So I'm now going to connect to the back of the switch the second cable. Let's see what happens. It is initializing the ports on the back. And let's do a show stacking. As you can see, it automatically de detected that we now have a ring topology. And this gives you more resiliency, more redundancy. This is my end of my, my demonstration. I wanted to thank you for watching 